Good day, everyone. Once we have understood the role of a payload in a drone, it is now important to understand the factors which help in deciding the payload for a drone. In our current lecture, we will be discussing the factors which decide on the selection of payload. These factors are required to keep in mind while deciding the payload for the drone. Let's look at it closely in our upcoming slides. Let's understand first what is the selection criteria for the payloads. The different selection criteria are as given as follows, which is the payload weight, power requirement, safety requirement, size, based on mission requirements, data generated, and software requirement. Keeping the selection criteria in mind while selecting the required sensors, cameras, or any of the payloads is very important. Let us detail understand these criteria further to know how do they actually influence the selection of the payload. The first and the most important criteria while selecting the payload is the weight of the payload. Usually, when a drone is designed, a payload weight is kept in mind while designing the drone. For example, let's say we have bought a drone or designed a drone which can carry a payload of only 300 grams. And we need the drone to do a survey. For the survey, we need a camera as the payload. However, there are a large range of cameras that are already available in the market. We would then have to find a camera which would fit the 300 gram payload limit. It is important always to keep in mind the weight that is present for the payload because that influences a lot on what the drone will do or will there be a need of multiple drones to do the work or so. This is true for any kind of payload such as LIDARs, payload delivery and much more. Another part to keep in mind is if there is a payload which has a spraying tank which is carrying a liquid. That liquid might slosh also while spraying the same over the field. At the same time, the liquid is being sprayed and the payload weight actually reduces on the drone. Therefore, the performance of the drone changes when there is a such kind of payload on the drone. Next important factor in deciding the payload is the power requirement of the drone. Depending on the kind of power requirement for running the payload, the kind of sensor or payload needs to be decided. Usually, the power required for running the payload is taken from the battery source. However, if the power requirement of the payload is more, it will have an effect on the endurance of the drone, which will reduce since the battery is being used now both by the drone as well as the payload. There can be a possibility of attaching a separate power source for the payload also. However, that means you are carrying the extra battery, which will influence the amount of payload that is being carried by the drone. Therefore, keeping in mind the power requirement of the payload, you have to decide on the suitable payload. It is important to keep in mind the safety of the payload while using them on the drone. Let me give you an example. Let us assume that we have a very costly lidar which is required for doing a mining survey. For such a lidar, we definitely need to keep it in a cage or protect it in case the drone crashes or so. Therefore, we will need to design a protection system for the lidar which also needs to be considered while selecting the payload. Other safety systems such as parachutes or deployable boys are also used in order to protect the payload and the drone in case the drone malfunctions in midair. The payload will also need protection from vibration or sudden increase in the voltage of the payload. In such cases, either the payload such as the camera can be mounted on gimbal to protect it, protect it from vibrations or having vibration absorption tampers to absorb the vibrations coming on the payload. Similarly, we can use filter circuits in order to avoid any voltage spikes coming to the drone payload. When considering the size or volume available for the payload components, it is not sufficient to simply allocate volume for each component. Instead, components will be configured within the payload compartments, placed for proper payload assembly and tested for any electronic interference to each other. Furthermore, components must be arranged me, so that the aircraft center of gravity is maintained for a stable flight. Also keep in mind that the payload is within the size of the frame. Any payload part, once it starts going outside the payload, outside the drone's frame, 
it might have an effect on the aerodynamics of the drone. Another effect of the size of the payload, which we have found out while flying the drone, is the size of the, if the size of the payload is bigger, like a speaker, it has a blunt body effect on the aerodynamics of the drone, which leads to a lot of drag on the drone. This in turn affects the stability and reduces the overall endurance of the drone. In the beginning of our course, we discussed about the importance of requirements and how we convert them into specifications. Similarly, based on the requirements, we have to identify that payload which can fulfill the, those requirements. For example, in the case of mining, if we have to find the volumetric amount of the mine that has been dug up, we would decide to use a camera which can fit the payload weight that a drone can carry. Similarly, if you have to survey the forest to identify whether there is any friction between the trees which might lead to fire, we will use a thermal camera which can look for thermal changes in the forest which can lead to fire. Therefore, depending on the component which we have to measure, we decide on the appropriate sensor or payload which can actually help us measure that component. Therefore, the payload decided should in turn measure quantities which can help in fulfilling the requirements of designing the drone. This is very much important to keep in mind because many times what happens is you try to select too many payloads and whether or not it satisfies the mission, the drone definitely becomes heavier in size. Another selection criteria for deciding the payload is the kind of data that is generated from the payload. For example, let us talk about a LIDAR which generates a point cloud data of the overall surrounding which it scans. The point cloud data which is captured by the LIDAR can be used for the reconstruction of the entire area and analyzing the area. Similarly, the camera captures images as well as a video of the survey area. This pictures and with this pictures and videos can be used for a variety of purposes depending on the requirements of the mission. Therefore, based on what the requirement demands, whether it is a picture or a video or a point cloud data, the payload can be decided. Many times, the data that is captured by the payload is fed to a software that is used for extracting information from the data. There are many types of compatible, there are different so compatible software that are already come with the payload or sometimes you have to develop your own customized software for your applications, such as software, which does object recognition and detection. In such cases, depending on the time that is present for deployment of the mission, along with any development time needed, you can select the software. These days, many of the commercially available software can be used easily with most of the payloads. However, due to the subscription fees present on the payload, many of the payloads also work with open source software also. However, looking at the software component is also crucial while deciding on the payloads. To summarize, we looked at the following factors which help us decide the payload of the drone. They are the payload weight, power requirement, safety requirement, size, based on mission requirements, data generated, and software requirement. In order to ease our selection of payloads, let us discuss some of the commonly used payloads for various applications of the drones in our next lecture. Thank you very much.